Reform Devotion number 7 of 365, Heavenly Contemplation by Richard Baxter from the Saints' Everlasting Rest. O God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory, because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. Psalm 63, verses 1 through 6. Frequency in heavenly contemplation is particularly important to prevent shyness between your soul and God. Frequent fellowship breeds friendship, and friendship increases love and delight. It gives us confidence with a person. The chief purpose of meditation is to have fellowship and friendship with God. Therefore, if you come but seldom to it, you will remain a stranger. When a man feels his need of God and must seek his help in a time of trouble, then it is great encouragement to have to go to a God with whom we are acquainted. The heavenly Christian says, I know him. I have gone this way many a time before. It is the same God that I daily talk to. We know each other. How different it is when a person is forced to seek God in desperation and thinks, I'm not familiar with the court of heaven, and I hardly know the God to whom I must speak especially when we come to die and must immediately appear before God and expect to enter into his eternal rest. Then the difference is most significant. What a joy it will be to think, I am going to the place that I daily visited, to the place where I tasted frequent delights, to that God whom I have met in my meditation so often. On the other hand, what a terror will it be to think, I must die and leave a place where I am acquainted to go to a place that is strange to me. I am convinced that it is the neglect of this duty which so commonly makes death, even to godly people, unwelcome and uncomfortable. Therefore, I urge you to make your meditation frequent. How clumsy are people in doing that in which they have had little practice. Frequency will familiarize you with the work and make it easier and more delightful. The hill which made you pant and puff the first time you climbed it, you may easily run up when you become accustomed to it. If, in holy meditation, you get near to Christ and warm your heart with the fire of love, but then come rarely to it, your former coldness will return. Especially is this true because the work is so spiritual and goes against depraved human nature.